Nestled in the heart of Manhattan, Central Park stands as a verdant sanctuary amid the concrete canyons of New York City. Its sprawling landscapes, iconic landmarks, and cultural significance make it a testament to the enduring vision of urban planning. As we delve into the history of Central Park, we embark on a journey through time, tracing the evolution of this urban oasis from its inception in the mid-19th century to its role as a cherished retreat and cultural haven in the bustling metropolis. From the creative brilliance of landscape architects Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vox to the transformative periods of construction, decline, and restoration, the story of Central Park weaves a rich tapestry of nature, innovation, and the indomitable spirit of New York City. Join us as we explore the layers of history that have shaped Central Park into an enduring symbol of respite, recreation, and the harmonious coexistence of nature and urban life. Planning and Design, 1850s In the mid-19th century, against the backdrop of New York City's rapid urbanization and industrialization, the idea of creating a grand public park began to take root. Recognizing the need for a green respite amid the bustling city, the New York State Legislature, in 1853, authorized the creation of Central Park. This marked the genesis of an ambitious endeavor that would reshape the landscape of Manhattan. The task of designing Central Park was entrusted to two visionary minds, Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vox. The duo won a design competition with their Greensward plan, an innovative concept that departed from the rigid, formal designs of European parks. Instead, Olmsted and Vox envisioned a park that seamlessly blended naturalistic landscapes with carefully crafted elements, creating an oasis that would cater to the needs of a rapidly growing urban population. The plan embraced the existing topography of the site, which consisted of rocky terrain, hills, and meadows. By weaving serpentine paths, open meadows, and strategically placed bodies of water, the designers sought to create an immersive experience where visitors could escape the urban chaos and reconnect with nature. The planning and design phase laid the foundation for Central Park's unique character. It set the stage for a departure from traditional landscape architecture, emphasizing not just aesthetic appeal, but the creation of a democratic space accessible to all social classes. The vision of Olmsted and Vox was a departure from the norm, signaling the birth of a revolutionary concept that would redefine the role of urban parks in the modern world. Landscape Architects, Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vox The heartbeat of Central Park's visionary design resonates with the collaborative genius of Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vox, whose innovative vision transformed an idea into a sprawling reality. In the mid-19th century, amidst the clamor of urbanization in New York City, these two architects won the design competition with their groundbreaking Greensward plan. Frederick Law Olmsted, a journalist and social critic, and Calvert Vox, a skilled architect, forged a partnership that would leave an indelible mark on the landscape of Manhattan. Their Greensward plan diverged from the formal designs of European parks, introducing a groundbreaking approach that prioritized the harmonious integration of nature and human activity. Olmsted, with a keen eye for the natural environment, sought to create a park that felt like an escape into the countryside, away from the cacophony of city life. Vox complemented this vision with architectural elements that seamlessly blended into the natural topography, ensuring that the park appeared as an organic extension of the existing landscape. Together, they conceived a park that transcended mere aesthetics, it became a social equalizer, accessible to people of all walks of life. Their emphasis on meandering paths, open meadows, and strategically placed bodies of water created an immersive experience that invited New Yorkers to reconnect with nature within the confines of an ever-expanding city. The brilliance of Olmsted and Vox lay not just in the physical design, but in the philosophy they embedded within Central Park. They championed the idea that a public park should be a democratic space, providing solace and recreation for everyone, regardless of social status. As we explore Central Park's history, the legacy of these landscape architects stands as a testament to their revolutionary approach that forever changed the concept of urban green spaces. Construction, 1858-1873 
With the visionary design of Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Box in hand, the realization of Central Park commenced with a monumental construction effort that spanned over 15 years. In 1858, under the guidance of Commissioner of Public Works Andrew Haswell Green, the groundbreaking process began to transform the rugged and rocky terrain into the lush haven we recognize today. The physical manifestation of Central Park unfolded in stages, each revealing the meticulous execution of the Greensward Plan. Immigrant laborers, including Irish and German workers, toiled to reshape the landscape, moving vast amounts of earth, transplanting trees, and crafting the park's signature features. The construction process was a testament to both human determination and the transformative power of landscape architecture. In 1858, Central Park officially opened to the public, offering an initial glimpse into the transformative potential of this urban oasis. However, construction efforts continued for several years to refine and enhance the park's features. The gradual unveiling of iconic landmarks such as Bethesda Terrace, Bow Bridge, and the Central Park Zoo showcased the meticulous attention to detail and the commitment to creating a diverse and enchanting landscape. This extended period of construction not only marked the physical transformation of Central Park, but also emphasized the commitment to delivering a public space that would stand the test of time. The park's evolution over the course of construction reflected the dedication to Olmsted and Vox's vision and the enduring legacy of Central Park as a testament to the fusion of nature and urban ingenuity. Early Years and Growth, Late 19th Century As the 19th century progressed, Central Park entered a phase of enchanting maturity and widespread popularity. The park, officially opened in 1858, rapidly became a cherished retreat for New Yorkers seeking refuge from the bustling urban environment. The early years were marked by a gradual embrace of the park's diverse features and a burgeoning cultural and recreational scene. With each passing season, Central Park revealed new facets of its design. Bethesda Terrace, completed in the early 1860s, became a focal point for social gatherings and performances. The scenic Bow Bridge, gracefully spanning the lake, invited romantic strolls, while the Central Park Zoo, established in 1864, added a touch of wildlife to the park's offerings. During this period, Central Park emerged as a cultural hub. The Metropolitan Museum of Art, located adjacent to the park, opened its doors in 1870, further enhancing the park's cultural significance. Art exhibitions, concerts, and public events became integral to the park's identity, fostering a sense of community and shared experiences among New Yorkers. The growth of Central Park mirrored the flourishing city around it. The addition of the mall, a promenade lined with American elm trees, provided a shaded pathway for leisurely walks and socializing. The Great Lawn, initially a reservoir, was transformed into a vast green expanse for recreation and gatherings. The late 19th century witnessed the park's integration into the fabric of city life. It became not only a haven for nature enthusiasts, but also a backdrop for social events, civic celebrations, and the ever-evolving cultural tapestry of New York City. Central Park's early years were characterized by a harmonious blend of recreation, culture, and the joyous camaraderie of a growing community finding solace within its leafy embrace. The Olmsted and Box Legacy As the late 19th century unfolded, Central Park stood not only as a physical oasis in the heart of Manhattan, but also as a living testament to the enduring legacy of its visionary architects, Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vox. The park's continued growth and maturation during this period echoed the profound impact of their innovative design and philosophy. Olmsted and Vox's legacy was characterized by more than just the physical features they crafted, it was ingrained in the very essence of the park's purpose and identity. The Greensward Plan, with its emphasis on naturalistic landscapes and democratic accessibility, became a guiding principle for urban planning and landscape architecture globally. The Central Park Mall, designed as a grand promenade, exemplified Olmsted and Vox's vision of a space that encouraged social interaction. Lined with American elm trees, the mall became a beloved location for leisurely strolls, 
fostering a sense of community and connection with nature within the heart of a bustling city. Beyond the mall, their legacy extended to the preservation of the Ramble, a wooded area designed to provide a rustic escape, and the creation of the Great Lawn, transforming what was once a reservoir into a vast, open space for recreation and communal activities. The concept of greensward, denoting a sweeping expanse of green, became a central theme in their legacy. Olmsted and Vox believed that such spaces were essential for the physical and mental well-being of urban dwellers, offering a retreat where people from all walks of life could find solace and rejuvenation. The Olmsted and Vox legacy in Central Park was not merely architectural, it was a philosophy that championed the idea that green spaces within cities are a fundamental right for all citizens. Their innovative approach to integrating nature and urban life not only transformed Central Park but set a precedent for the creation of public parks worldwide. As the park continued to evolve, the legacy of Olmsted and Vox remained etched in every meandering path, tranquil glade, and open expanse, leaving an enduring imprint on the urban landscape they helped redefine. Decline and Restoration, 20th Century The 20th century brought both challenges and opportunities to Central Park, marking a chapter in its history characterized by moments of decline and subsequent restoration. As the city around it evolved, Central Park faced neglect, financial constraints, and a decline in maintenance that began to erode the luster of this once pristine oasis. In the mid-20th century, Central Park experienced a period of neglect and disrepair. The park's infrastructure and landscapes fell into decline due to a combination of factors, including budget constraints, increased crime rates, and a lack of focused attention. Its once vibrant features began to lose their sheen, and the park's reputation as a safe and inviting space was tarnished. However, amidst this decline emerged a renewed commitment to restore Central Park to its former glory. In the 1980s, the Central Park Conservancy, a private, non-profit organization, took on the formidable task of revitalizing the park. With a dedicated team of experts, community support, and private funding, the Conservancy launched an ambitious restoration project. The restoration efforts addressed a myriad of issues, from crumbling pathways to the rejuvenation of iconic structures. The Central Park Conservancy's initiatives not only revived the physical infrastructure, but also implemented measures to enhance safety and security, making the park a welcoming haven once again. This period of decline and subsequent restoration marked a turning point for Central Park. It became a symbol of resilience and community-driven efforts to preserve urban green spaces. The commitment to maintaining the park's original vision, coupled with innovative restoration techniques, rekindled the spirit of Olmsted and Vox's Greensward plan. Central Park's restoration not only reclaimed its status as a premier urban park, but also set a precedent for the importance of community engagement and public-private partnerships in safeguarding shared public spaces. The 20th century restoration became a testament to the enduring value placed on Central Park by New Yorkers and the wider community, ensuring that its legacy would persist for generations to come. Modern Amenities and Attractions as Central Park transitioned into the latter half of the 20th century, it underwent a transformative phase that embraced modern amenities and attractions. This era saw the introduction of facilities and spaces that not only enhanced the park's recreational offerings, but also catered to the evolving needs and preferences of the city's diverse population. The park's infrastructure was upgraded to accommodate contemporary recreational activities. State-of-the-art sports facilities, including ball fields, tennis courts, and playgrounds, were integrated into the park's design. These additions expanded Central Park's appeal, making it a hub for athletic pursuits and family-friendly activities. In 1967, the Delacorte Theatre, an open-air venue located within the park, became a focal point for cultural events. The annual Shakespeare in the Park series, inaugurated in the same year, brought free theatrical performances to New Yorkers, fostering a vibrant cultural scene within the park's boundaries. Beyond sports and culture, Central Park embraced ecological sustainability. The Central Park Conservancy, in collaboration with city agencies, 
implemented measures to enhance the park's ecological health. The introduction of wildlife habitats, restoration of water bodies, and the incorporation of sustainable landscaping practices showcased a commitment to environmental stewardship. In 1980, the iconic Woolman Rink was renovated, offering a seasonal ice skating experience against the picturesque backdrop of the New York City skyline. This exemplified the park's ability to adapt its features to suit the changing seasons and provide a diverse range of recreational opportunities. The introduction of modern amenities and attractions not only revitalized Central Park, but also reinforced its role as a dynamic and inclusive space for recreation, culture, and relaxation. As the city around it evolved, Central Park continued to adapt, ensuring its continued relevance as a cherished urban oasis in the heart of Manhattan. Conservation and Preservation Entering the latter part of the 20th century and into the 21st century, Central Park has become a symbol not only of recreational vibrancy, but also of an unwavering commitment to conservation and preservation. The park's custodians, led by the Central Park Conservancy, embraced a holistic approach to ensure the sustained health and ecological balance of this urban gem. Central Park's conservation initiatives encompassed a spectrum of efforts aimed at maintaining its diverse ecosystems. Restoration projects targeted specific areas, from woodlands to water bodies, ensuring that the park's natural beauty thrived alongside the cultural amenities. Native plantings and sustainable horticultural practices were introduced to enhance biodiversity and promote ecological resilience. Water bodies within the park, including the iconic Bethesda Terrace Fountain and Central Park Reservoir, underwent restoration to preserve their historical significance and ecological functions. These initiatives not only revitalized key features, but also served as a testament to the commitment to maintaining Central Park as a living, breathing landscape. The protection of wildlife habitats became a priority, with careful considerations given to bird migration patterns, nesting sites, and the overall ecological balance. The park's planners and conservationists collaborated to create environments conducive to various species, contributing to the biodiversity that thrives within its boundaries. Education and community engagement played integral roles in the conservation narrative. Programs and initiatives were established to raise awareness about environmental stewardship, encouraging New Yorkers to actively participate in the preservation of their beloved park. The Central Park Conservancy's dedication to fostering a sense of collective responsibility became a cornerstone of the park's long-term sustainability. In the realm of preservation, the conservation efforts extended beyond the natural landscapes to the preservation of historical structures and landmarks. The meticulous maintenance of iconic features, such as Bow Bridge and Bethesda Terrace, ensured that the park retained its timeless allure while standing as a testament to the enduring legacy of its creators. As Central Park continued to evolve, the dedication to conservation and preservation became integral to its identity. It demonstrated that the park, while adapting to modern needs, remained steadfast in its commitment to safeguarding the ecological and historical richness that defines this iconic urban oasis. Iconic Movie and Cultural References Central Park's allure extends beyond its physical landscapes, it has become a cinematic and cultural backdrop that encapsulates the spirit of New York City. The late 20th century saw Central Park becoming a prominent feature in iconic movies and cultural references, solidifying its status as not just a park, but a symbol deeply embedded in the global imagination. Countless films have utilized Central Park's picturesque settings to tell diverse stories. From the classic romance of When Harry Met Sally to the whimsy of Enchanted, the park has served as a cinematic canvas reflecting the various moods and narratives of the silver screen. Its iconic locations, including Bethesda Terrace, Bow Bridge, and the Great Lawn, have become synonymous with the visual language of New York City in cinema. Beyond the realm of movies, Central Park has been a recurring motif in literature, music, and art. It has inspired poets, novelists, and musicians, becoming a muse for creative expressions that capture the essence of urban life. The Literary Walk, lined with statues of literary giants, 
adds a touch of literary charm to the park, inviting contemplation and reflection. Cultural events within Central Park, such as concerts on the Great Lawn and public art installations, have further solidified its role as a cultural hub. The park has been a stage for performances by renowned artists, turning it into a vibrant arena for music festivals, theater productions, and community celebrations. Art installations, like Christo and Jean Claude's The Gates in 2005, have transformed the park into a dynamic gallery, showcasing the intersection of contemporary art and natural beauty. These cultural references have elevated Central Park from a recreational space to an ever-evolving cultural tapestry that resonates with people from diverse backgrounds and interests. As Central Park continues to be a muse for creative expressions, its iconic presence in movies, literature, music, and art cements its place in the collective consciousness. The park's cultural significance goes beyond its physical boundaries, making it a living testament to the enduring allure of nature within the urban sprawl and an emblem of New York City's rich cultural heritage. Evergreen Legacy Central Park's legacy is not confined to bricks, mortar, or lush greenery, it is an evergreen narrative that transcends time, shaping the very essence of New York City's identity. As the park progressed through the late 20th century and into the 21st century, its impact on the urban landscape and the lives of its denizens became increasingly pronounced. The legacy of Central Park is a living story, woven into the fabric of the city's evolution. It stands as a testament to the enduring vision of Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vox, who sought to create a democratic space for all to enjoy. The park's continued relevance is a reflection of the foresight that embraced both the timeless principles of nature and the adaptability needed to meet the changing needs of a dynamic city. Central Park's legacy extends beyond its physical features. It resides in the collective memories of countless New Yorkers and visitors who have found solace, joy, and inspiration within its borders. The park's iconic landmarks, from Bethesda Terrace to the Bow Bridge, have become touchstones, capturing moments of romance, introspection, and cultural celebration. This evergreen legacy is perpetuated by the ongoing efforts of organizations like the Central Park Conservancy, ensuring that the park remains a beacon of environmental stewardship and community engagement. The commitment to conservation, preservation, and adaptation reflects an understanding that the legacy of Central Park is a responsibility to be upheld by each generation. The park's role as a cultural icon continues to grow, with filmmakers, artists, and musicians drawing inspiration from its timeless landscapes. Central Park's presence in movies, literature, and art reinforces its status as a symbol that transcends physical boundaries, reaching into the realms of imagination and collective memory. As Central Park remains an integral part of New York City's narrative, its evergreen legacy unfolds with each passing season. It is a story of resilience, adaptability, and the enduring power of green spaces to foster a sense of belonging and harmony within an ever-changing urban landscape. A timeless haven in the heart of the city. Central Park, a sprawling oasis amidst the towering skyline of Manhattan, stands as a testament to the enduring spirit of nature within the urban tapestry. From its inception in the mid-19th century to its present-day prominence, the history of Central Park is a captivating narrative of innovation, resilience, and the harmonious coexistence of nature and city life. The visionary design of Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vox marked the genesis of a revolutionary concept, challenging conventional notions of park design. Their greensward plan not only transformed rocky terrain into meandering paths and scenic landscapes, but introduced a philosophy that echoed through the ages, that green spaces are a democratic right, accessible to all. The construction phase, spanning over 15 years, reshaped the park's physical contours and unveiled iconic features that would become synonymous with Central Park's identity. The early years saw the park blossom into a cultural and recreational haven, with the addition of landmarks like Bethesda Terrace, Bow Bridge, and the Central Park Zoo. The legacy of Olmsted and Vox resonates through every meadow, tree-lined path, and tranquil glade, embodying a commitment to a shared space that transcends social barriers. 
The late 20th century witnessed challenges, yet the park's decline spurred a community-driven restoration that revitalized its essence and affirmed its significance as a dynamic urban sanctuary. As Central Park embraced modern amenities, cultural events, and ecological conservation in the 20th and 21st centuries, it became not just a physical retreat but a symbol ingrained in the global imagination. From iconic movies to cultural references, the park's influence extended far beyond its boundaries, becoming a muse for creative expressions that celebrate the essence of New York City. Central Park's evergreen legacy unfolds with each passing season, a story of adaptability, conservation, and the enduring power of green spaces to foster community, recreation, and cultural enrichment. As the park continues to evolve, it remains a timeless haven in the heart of the city, a refuge where the rustle of leaves, the laughter of children, and the embrace of nature echo through the ages, inviting all to partake in its enduring allure.